Well, hello and welcome to Growing Deeper Daily. Today is Good Friday. We have been following the footsteps of Jesus from the triumphal entry of Palm Sunday all the way through to the events of today, of the cross, where Jesus goes to die as the substitute, as the slain Lamb of God for the sins of the world. I want to invite you out. If you're local, come on. Tonight at 7 o'clock, we're going to be having our worship service. It's going to be a wonderful time reflecting on the cross, looking in our own life and confessing sin and taking of the Lord's Supper together. I encourage you to come on out or you can join us on our Facebook page. Uh, and then as well, Sunday morning, Easter Sunday, we're looking forward. I uh, love that line from the famous preacher. It, it may be Friday, but Sunday's coming. And Easter Sunday is just a two days out, 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock services. Uh, register online or come on out in person or watch us here on our Facebook and YouTube channels. We can't wait uh, to worship and celebrate with you these next few days together. Uh, but remember, we are here today on Good Friday. We're talking about the events that went on in Jesus' life today. We've been tracking day by day the progression from Palm Sunday and the joy and the hope of saving us now to the challenges of Jesus right there in the temple area, tossing tables, to his confrontations with the religious leaders, to his anointing and to his betrayal, and ultimately to his time with the disciples the day prior in the upper room for that last supper as he shares intimately his concerns and his desires for them, as he washes their feet as he sacrificially demonstrates to them the service they should have for another. And in fact, the washing of the feet is even deeper than that. Uh, it is a sign to them as well of the ultimate sacrifice that he will give in going to the cross. And to follow Jesus means that when they follow him, they will need to be willing to give up their lives even for each other. I mean, Jesus really shows unique concern for the disciples and how they'll operate together moving forward, how we as his people will as well. Uh, but on Good Friday, we see Jesus here in the garden. Jesus has been arrested in the middle of the night there. Uh, and now he goes on the way to the cross, the Via Della Rosa, the way of sorrows, the way of suffering. Uh, it's hard to pinpoint exactly the progression, uh, but we see that Jesus is arrested. We see him then taken to the house of Annas and then Caiaphas, then to Pilate, then to Herod, then back to Pilate, and then ultimately to be beaten and flogged and pointed to the cross where he dies on Golgotha. And today, uh, I wanted to talk with you just about one part of the events of today. Tonight, we'll get into it a little more of Jesus' last words on the cross. But in Matthew 27, verse 15 and following, uh, we see the crowd choosing Barabbas to be freed and for Jesus to be punished. He says, Now at the feast, the governor was accustomed to release for the crowd any one prisoner whom they wanted, and they had then a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Who do you want me to release for you, Barabbas or Jesus, who was called the Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had delivered him up. Besides, while he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with this righteous man. I have suffered because of him today in the dream. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. And Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus, who is called the Christ? They all said, Let him be crucified. And he said, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he was gaining nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I'm innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourself. And all the people answered, His blood be on us and our children. And then they released for them Barabbas. And having scourged Jesus, delivered him to be crucified. I want you just to notice this today. The innocence of Jesus innocent sacrifice, the perfect Lamb of God, that the crowd was in such a frenzy that those in the religious leaders in that day were so worked up about Jesus and what he stood for and how he was acting and what he was teaching. that They were willing to bring false claims against him and that it took Pilate, this Roman official, to recognize the righteousness the innocence of Jesus. In fact, it says here as well, Pilate's wife had a dream, even recognizing it. 
Pilate is this uneasy figure in this scene where he washes his hands and hands them over. He, he is conflicted because he sees that there's no case against Jesus. Jesus, the innocent Lamb of God, on Good Friday goes to the cross for us. Jesus, the innocent Lamb of God, dies for the sins of the world as a perfect sacrifice. Like the temple sacrifices of old, there needed to be an unblemished sacrifice, a perfect son, a perfect uh, a sacrifice, a, 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 a son that was set apart. And Jesus was that. And even in the words of this Roman official and leader, the innocence and beauty and wonder of Jesus is recognized. The Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Jesus, on our behalf, Jesus goes to the cross. It says then that the soldiers mocked him. And the governors, they took Jesus into this headquarters and they gathered the whole battalion and they stripped him and put a scarlet robe and twisting together a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and put a reed in his right hand and kneeling before him, they mocked him saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they spit on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him and led him away to crucify him. Jesus, the innocent one, mocked. You know, uh, we want to move quickly to Easter Sunday. I get it. We want to get to the point where we celebrate the new life of resurrection and the hope and forgiveness and triumph that comes with Easter Sunday. And boy, do we get to do that in amazing ways here in the next few days. But I want you to sit today with the depth and the sadness and the difficulty of Good Friday. That here Jesus, this innocent one, that is mocked and scourged, goes through this pain for us. He has done it for you. God has died for you. Jesus loved us so much that he took this cup that was set apart for him on this Good Friday so that we might have life, and forgiveness, and hope eternal. And do you trust in this Jesus? Have you confessed those sins and trusted in this perfect spotless Lamb of God? And Today on Good Friday, spend some moments in silence and reflection on the pain and the anguish that the Son of Man went through so that we might be forgiven, that we might be made whole. The cross, the empty tomb, it is the climax that Scripture has been leading to now. This ultimate truth revealed that God was willing to give of himself to put all things right, and he has done it for us. Do you believe it? If you do, you have life and forgiveness and hope in him. So trust in him afresh today and follow him. I hope that you'll join us tonight as we reflect some more on Good Friday's events, as we think of the path that Jesus took to the cross and are reminded of his sacrifice on our behalf. Uh, tomorrow, we are going to have another Growing Deeper Daily on Saturday. We usually don't do it on Saturday. But I just want to give you a few words of reflection on the silence of Saturday as we think about what happened on that in-between day as we wait between the cross and resurrection. God bless you. Hope to see you out here tonight and know that we're thinking about you and we're praying for you here at Gateway.